Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Bite Size Talk. With us is Yasmin Fangberg. I'm very happy that you're here. Thank you very much. And uh, she's going to talk about yet another new pipeline that is going to be in, uh, released very soon, which is uh, NFCO Funk Scan. Uh, off to you, Yasmin. Yes, thank you very much. So I will introduce this pipeline to you now, which is a uh, an NFCore pipeline to screen for functional components of nucleotide sequences from pro prokaryotic genomes or metagenomes. So what are these functional components that we are interested in or that we screen for? The pipeline screens on the one hand for antimicrobial peptides. These are um, like they are important in, in innate immunity and um, yeah, they are very short sequences um, like peptides out of about 20 amino acids. So you can find them uh, even in small or um, fragmented DNA and metagenomes. Uh, the same applies to antibiotic resistance genes. On the other hand, um, biosynthetic gene clusters, here at the bottom, they are quite big, basically because they consist of a whole gene cassette, um, which uh, codes for a whole metabolic function or um, yeah, secondary metabolites um, or yeah, natural products. So who would be interested in such a pipeline which identifies these compounds? So of course, in natural product discovery where you can um, yeah, identify these compounds to develop thera therapeutics, in antibiotic research, in environmental metagenomics, or simply to functionally um, yeah, to have functional and genomic annotations. So in, of course, in these research fields, there is already um, uh, yeah, this detection of these compounds uh, being done with a couple of tools. However, there are certain issues. So one of them would be the efficiency, because mostly you apply the tools manually, and then the, you only have like a uh, like a very specific uh, purpose of the tool. So you can identify a single compound, but it's yeah not a very broad thing. And you uh, have only a single algorithm that ident identifies the output. So it's uh, yeah could be more feasible to have uh, this whole uh, process streamlined in a pipeline, and also the output of these tools is not standardized. Another issue would be the reproducibility, because during the like throughout the years the uh, tools develop new functions, bugs are fixed, so it's very important actually for researchers to uh, record which versions of which tools they are using which is um, hard if you execute them manually on your samples always. Also, data privacy. There are a bunch of tools that uh, offer web services where you can upload your data and so they are analyzed for you. However, this requires that you give your data to a third party, which is not always um, yeah, intended or even possible. Another issue is that uh, bioinformatics skills are often needed. Um, it's uh, yeah. It is even that you can that you have to write small bash scripts to execute the tools on your data, um, which is then yeah not applicable for uh, for all people. Um, like if there are biochemists who just want to know what is actually in their data, they don't want to be trained bioinformaticians. So this is actually uh, many problems that our pipeline tackles. Uh, namely, that is that it is very scalable since it's uh, a next flow pipeline. All NF core pipelines are next flow pipelines. They are very efficient and scalable. You can uh, yeah execute them on your local computer, laptop, up to the institute's HPC. They are reproducible since they record all the tools and versions of the tools. And um, of course, you can decide where you want to have your data. You are not forced to put them uh, on any web server. <clears throat> Also, they are very easy to execute, the pipeline, which you will see later when we come to the tutorial part. So now, um, yeah, I uh, emphasized how easy the pipeline uh, is to use, but it didn't start very easily. So we went back, or I go back to October 2021, we, when we assembled the ideas to develop a pipeline of yeah, many tools, which we brainstormed what would be needed for like obtaining the resistance genes, the biosynthetic gene clusters and the AMPs. And yeah, so not all tools were yet on Conda or um, yeah, speaking of uh, NF core modules. So we had to do a lot of work there. Then throughout the next year, uh, we streamlined the process a bit and yeah, the ideas got clearer. And we even went to the first sketch of the famous tube map sketch 
And finally, in 2023 now, the pipeline is ready to use. And this is the current version. So I will walk you through it in the first step. We So in the first step, we have the um, input, which is being annotated. So as I said, input can be any, any genome sequence, could be metagenome, context, could also be complete bacterial genomes. This uh, data is then analyzed by one of the three tools, the an annotation tools. And after this, um, yeah, this data goes into one or all of the three workflows. So the antibiotic resistance genes in the yellow workflow, the BGCs in purple, and the antimicrobial peptides in red. Um, not all of the downstream tools need the annotated data. So for some, we also use the uh, direct input data. Then, as I said, each of the workflows has a bunch of tools. So, for example, the AM, uh, AMP workflow has here four tools. And um, as I mentioned before, they follow different strategies. So um, some of them use, for example, um, ne deep neural networks and machine learning to identify compounds uh, of AMPs, which would be, for example, Ampere or here deep BGC for the BGC workflow. Other tools have like rule-based strategies. So there are a lot of algorithms uh, predicting the um, yeah predicting the compounds, and the results are then very diverse as you can imagine. So now it is important to aggregate these outputs and summarize them into a nicely readable format, which is the third step. For this, we use one uh, tool per workflow. Two of them are uh, developed by ourselves, so mcombi and combigc and harmonization was already a tool available. So yeah, this was basically the overall workflow. And now I would like to show you how to apply the pipeline and you will see that it's uh, really very easy. So we start with the input, which is a sample sheet, basically a table with two columns. First one is your sample name. Second one is the path to your faster input file. And then of course your faster file includes the ID of your sequence and the sequence itself. So this um, is what you need to actually run the pipeline. And it, it is as easy as running next flow run, NF core func scan. You give your input sample sheet, give your output directory. And yeah, this is basically a minimal example of a pipeline run. Of course, it's recommendable to use more parameters. One of them would be the annotation in the annotation step the flag annotation tool, where you can decide which tool you want to use. So they have different properties. Um, for example, Prodigal is very fast. However, we noticed that with Proca, we get better downstream results. So it depends on your needs and ideas what uh, which tool you would like to choose. The default is Proca. So after the annotation step, we come to the actual identification of the compounds. So you can activate each workflow with this flag run AMP screening, for example, for the AMPs. And by activating this, all the AMP tools are run on your data. You can also choose for any reason uh, to deactivate any of the tools. So you can switch them off with the flag AMP skip and then the name of the tool. This might be because some tools might be very uh, slow or you think they are so specific that you're not interested in the output. So as I said, for whichever reason, you can switch them off. And this is the same for the um, antibiotic resist resistance workflow. You can apply this flag. It runs all the four or five tools uh, on your data and you can skip any tool with the arc skip flag. Uh, same applies for BGC identification. You have the flag, it, all the tools are run. You can skip whichever you might want to skip. And of course, you can use not only one uh, of the flags per run, but all three flags at the same time. So your data is uh, investigated simultaneously and um, parallelized as much as possible with Nextflow. Okay, so these are the uh, identification steps. Now we come to the summary steps for each workflow. Let's start with the uh, antimicro antibiotic resistance, which is done by harmonization, which is a tool that is already out there. Here you can see the GitHub link. And this tool can actually summarize a bunch of outputs of, uh, yeah, of a bunch of uh, resistance identification tools. And our pipeline currently includes the orange tagged ones. So the output of those tools is then summarized into a standardized gene report. And this is how it looks. It's basically a table 
with uh, very many columns. So you have here the sample IDs and the genes that have been identified, some information about the databases, which tools were run and so on. So these are actually all the column headers that are yeah, very conclusive and you can use in this output table for downstream analysis in, yeah, in R or any statistics program. So this is very uh, similar to AMP Combi which we developed ourselves, or basically Anan and Luisa developed this, um, where you also have your sample IDs, um, then some information about probability of AMPs. And additional feature is that it not only identifies your antimicrobial peptides, but it also does some uh, back aligning to a reference database to uh, identify taxonomic classification. It also infers some chemical properties like stereochemistry and provides the publication so you can go, can go back and uh, read more about the comp compound identified. Okay, the last tool for the BGC workflow is CombiGC. Similar fashion, we have the sample IDs, the tools which have been uh, applied, and then more information about your candidate biosynthetic gene clusters. So with this, you see that um, yeah, we have a scalable workflow now to identify these compounds, which are important for a couple of research fields for, yeah, as I said, drug development, antibiotic research, and so on. So now, since the pipeline is almost ready, it's probably going to be released next week. Let's see about it. Uh, we have at least added all the modules and sub workflows. We do some more testing, and then the, pa the pull request will go out. And so I can already advertise if there are some is, uh, someone uh, here in the chat who would like to review. Please feel free to reach out to reach out to us on Slack. Okay. Um, in the future, we would like to include more screening modules and to also have a like visual summer summary of the output, which would be kind of a graphical dashboard, probably with a shiny app. Let's see about that. So with that, I would like to um, introduce the development team, which is uh, James, Luisa, Anan, Moritz, and me. And of course, we got a lot of help from the NF Core community, which were always assisting, very nice community. And also I would like to emphasize um, some yeah, colleagues here at my institute, which helped with biological and biochemistry, uh, biochemistry knowledge. Yeah, and my supervisor, Pierre Stalford from the Leibniz HKI. So with this, I would like to close and lead you to the uh, repository, our repository and the documentation of the pipeline. Mm, so yeah, if you want to interact with us, uh, feel free to join us on Slack. And otherwise, I'm open for questions either now or later on Slack. So back to you, Francisca. Thank you very much. Very interesting. So uh, every, anyone can now uh, unmute themselves if they have any questions. They can also post uh, questions in the in the chat, and then I will read them out. So are there any questions from the audience? Otherwise, I actually have a question. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have shown a minimal um, command that you can run that yes. doesn't actually specify the workflow that it's using. Exactly. Is that Good. going to use all three workflows or a specific one, a default? So here, for no, this one you mean? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, in the default, we have specified none. So this would actually run only the annotation, which is then, well, <laughs> probably not very useful for you. So mm. yeah, this is the current state of the, uh, yeah, of the settings. Maybe it's, we will change this later. I don't know. Right. And and would it make sense to run all three workflows at the same time? Or is that different kinds of samples? No, no. It's uh, exactly that's what it's uh, designed for. To, so to run efficiently on all three workflows. Um, yeah, depends on your interest. If you are not interested in the resistance genes, then of course you don't need to run it. But yeah, it's very efficient to use this also. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions at this moment in time? Uh, otherwise, I thank you again. It was a very nice talk. Um, thank you. And uh, of course, I would also like to thank the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite-sized talks and um, all of our 
um, audience for, for listening to the talk. And I hope to see everyone next week. Thank you very much. Bye.